we should do an example. I'm just going to let you see that. You can pause it and get those down. Uh, I'm going to erase it so I can do this example. It's a big one. Let's say we've got a real turbine generator. And what happens is, in my example, let's say I've got uh, winds coming this way. And uh, let's say I'm moving at, let's see, 30 miles an hour. That's a pretty stiff wind. Uh, 40 feet per second. Let's say I've got a, that's a pretty good sized wind. But let's say I've got 40 feet per second. What they look for in a, uh, for turbines is they look for an area that tends to neck down because they're looking for an area if you have volume flow rate and velocity times area, they're looking for an area where a place where the area necks down, like the Columbia Gorge uh, on the Portland, Ore Portland, excuse me, the Oregon-Washington border. Because as the area necks down, all the flow's got to get through here, so this, it's going to speed up. So uh, these are the areas and valleys and things where you tend to see um, wind turbines. So you tend to get higher than normal wind speeds. That's what makes them economical in those areas. And it hits the blades. And generally, right now, they run about two blades. They run bigger blades and slower blades, uh, less likely to hurt, hit birds if you're running a big, slow blade rather than a fast, small blade. Birds can avoid them much easier. And uh, disturbing migration routes has been a, a big factor. These things are big. Uh, the area of these is usually 150 to 250 feet per blade, even though they're running only running two, that's a, that's a lot of surface area. Let's say 200 feet, and let's say 200, maybe a 10 to 1. Make a skinny blade. So let's say uh, 200 feet by 10 feet wide. That seems kind of narrow, but 200 by 10. So that's, uh, that's 2,000 square feet, and two of these would be 4,000 square feet. So let's say the area is 4,000 square feet. And that's, uh, uh, well, that's uh, 2 times 200 feet times 10 feet. Just a little notation how I got that. Um, the density of air is, weight density of air is roughly 0 0.075 pounds per cubic foot. My first question is A. Let's see what the volume flow rate is. Well, the volume flow rate is velocity times area, which is going to be 40 feet per second times 4,000 feet squared, which is going to be 160,000. Again, check these. Notice I'm not, I'm kind of going off my head here, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And that's feet squared times feet feet cubed per second. So about 160,000 cubic feet per second of volume hitting these blades. So B. Well, let's find the power, the fluid power. Now I can use uh, two different equations. I'll use the volume flow rate one. I'll say fluid power is one half times the weight density of air over gravity times uh, volume flow rate times velocity squared. And that's one half, 0 0.075 pounds per cubic foot over 32 feet per second squared times the volume flow rate of 160,000, 1.60 times 10 to the 5 cubic feet per second. I just happened to write it that way. You could write 160,000, that's fine. Times the velocity squared, which is 40 feet Per second, and that's got to be squared. Now I'm going to have, just for the units, I'm going to have pounds over feet cubed over feet over second squared times feet cubed per second times feet squared per second squared. So let's see. Cubic feet, cubic feet are gone. I got one foot. It's two feet up here and one foot down there, so I have one foot left. 
I got one over second squared, one over second squared. I'm going to have foot pounds per second, which is a unit of power. That's good. So I'm going to say this is equal to, I'll get rid of that. I think this is a good one for the calculator. I get 1.2 times 10 to the 6. I'm going to try it one more time. Oh, I got a different answer. I got 3 times 10 to the 5. So I'm going to do, let's see, 0 0.5, 0 0.075 times 32 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the 5 times 40 squared times that. 300,000. Nice to do these things twice. So we get 300,000, exactly actually, and that's foot pounds per second. Now, let's see, next. Let's figure out the energy in one second. C. T equals one second. What's the kinetic energy of the fluid flow hitting this? Well, kinetic energy, since power is energy over time, kinetic energy is just the power times the time, which would be 300,000 foot pounds per second times one second. Ooh, that's an easy calculation. I like that. That's 300,000 pounds. Now, let's see. The next thing I want to do, D. Let's say these things have an efficiency of 50 percent. That even might be a little high. They're taking that kinetic energy and that rotation is going into an electrical generator. The electrical generator is converting into electrical energy. By the way, a generator and a motor are the same thing. Uh, a generator converts mechanical energy into electrical, and a motor converts uh, electrical energy into mechanical. So they can go both ways. Usually they design them specifically, but they can run both ways. So let's see. What's my, in, what's my output power in electrical? And I want, I'm going to have that in watts, because that's what electrical power comes out as. Now if I solve for electrical efficiency, is output power over input power times 100%. So the output power is equal to, let's see, output power is equal to the input power times the efficiency over 100%, which is 300,000. This is the power, not the energy foot-pounds per second times 50 percent over 100 percent. Now, I've got to convert this to watts. And I think that there are about 748, if you'd want to check this, but I think there are about 748, something like that, watts. And that's equivalent to about 550 foot-pounds per second of power. And the foot-pounds per second cancel out, and we'll get watts. And we'll get... Uh, we'll get about 204,000 watts. 205, yeah, 204,000. That's a, that's a fifth of a megawatt. If you had five of these turbines running, uh, you'd have a megawatt station. Um, they have far more of these running like the state line system on the Oregon and Washington border, and these things are getting, these things are getting built all the time. Wind farms are going up all over the place. <coughs> and like solar panels, 
The nice thing is, the more you build, the cheaper it gets because of economies of scale, but also, the more you build, the better you get at it. The competition uh, and just the fact that you're building a lot allows you to find ways to make them more efficient, and that reduces prices further. So as fossil fuel prices rise, solar and wind prices are continuing to drop.